Hi, I'm Stephen Downs, and in this video, I'm talking about persons. Grasshoppers are quite a bit different from other applications of this sort in the sense that it's really only intended to be used by one person. That doesn't mean you're limited to one person. It'll, it'll support having other people uh, have accounts on the system, and I'll show you that. But the idea here is that each person really should have their own instance of Grasshopper. Each course should be its own instance of Grasshopper. It's not an application designed to have people log on to it and create an account like they do on Facebook or Twitter or anything like that, and then leave contents on your website. No, they leave contents on their website you leave contents on your website and if you want their contents then you go out and get them that makes grasshopper very different from other applications so in this video when i'm talking about persons and logging on mostly i'm talking about you or maybe a few of your trusted friends so that you can collaborate all together on a single instance of grasshopper for example to offer an online course but I'm not talking about logins and all of that support for a whole bunch of subscribers. We'll handle that. You might recall when you started to create Grasshopper and install it for the first time, you created an admin user with an admin password. Well, that user is stored in the person database. To see the person database, we click on the database icon and then make list person and we'll see the persons listed on the side. Right now there's only one person on this website, which is the fallacy site we've been using, and that's Downs, that's me. <laughs> and I can look at my personal information by clicking here, or if I click over here on this little person icon on the far right hand side, I can also look at my personal profile here if I edit it, I see the editing screen. It's the standard editing screen, or I can click on my name here, and it's the standard editing screen. Notice that the password here can be changed. If you do change it, take note of the password because it's stored encrypted on your database, which means that you can't get it back, your enemies can't get it back, nobody can get it back. So save and write down your password. Another thing to notice here is that there are different statuses. You are admin status. Don't turn that off because then you won't be admin status. Uh, as well, you can enter other information about, your about yourself, your name, your email, your phone number, etc., your ORCID ID, and as we've seen already, we can add more fields to this as needed, and we may do that later on when we're looking at some of the uh, types of metadata that we make available to remote users, but that's another video. I recommend to people that they create a new second user as a backup to the first. To do that, just click on Create New User, and so here's our, our new user that we'll add. We'll call this person what will we call this person? We'll call this person Tester. I like using the name Tester. We'll give them an email address. Right now, Grasshopper doesn't do email confirmation. It may in the future, and it's always a good idea to have an email address on your file anyways. And then give Tester a password. Should be a decent password, but again, it's going to be encrypted as well. Just as a general hint on passwords, the longer the password, the harder it is for somebody to figure out what it is. So I recommend usually making it a long password. Like I say, a long password. I'll click on create new profile and profile has been made. Now, once you've created your new user, you need to make sure to give your user the permissions it needs to do stuff on the database because your new user 
is not yet an admin. So we'll look at our list of persons. Here's our list of persons. So now we have downs and tester. So I'm going to click on tester and I'm going to make tester an admin. That way, if I log out of downs and into tester, uh, I still have admin privileges. So let's test that. We'll log out of downs and we'll log in as tester. So tester and the password. There we go. And logged in and Firefox or Firefox Grasshopper restarts. And now everything's working. And when we look over here, we can see I'm logged in as tester. That's it. That's all you need to know about uh, making users and giving users admin status. I just, I just want to say Grasshopper is a bit different. Oh no, I'll, I'll do this in a different video. Hehe. <laughs>